Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com. Today we have an interesting hand that a lot of people will just view as somewhat standard, but I think if you really focus on getting full value from your strong hands, you'll often find that it's not just as easy as you know, re-raise and get your money in. While that is often nice when you can just re-raise and get your money in, sometimes you have to be a little bit more, I guess, deliberate with exactly how you go about it so that you keep your opponent's ranges wide. And it is important when you have a very strong hand to keep your opponent's ranges wide so that you can maximize value, assuming you're not necessarily just trying to play some sort of game theory optimal strategy where, you know, in general, you don't care if your opponents fold. But um, with your best hands against amateur players, you certainly want to play as if you were playing in a vacuum, meaning you are trying to maximize value with your exact hand at this exact moment. So here we have a raise to 375 from under the gun, and then seat two calls. Then it folds to me. I have 4,500 chips, so 30 big blinds at 75, 150. And I'm definitely going to re-raise in this spot, unless I get the vibe that someone yet to act is almost certainly going to 3-bet if I call. But uh, the vast majority of the time, I am going to re-raise. Now, normally, you know that I just re I suggest re-raising to about the size of the pot or a little bit less from imposition. With my best hand versus players who I think are completely oblivious to what I'm doing, I will make it less. So I'm not saying make it 900 here, but I do think something like 1100 or 1200 would be, would be pretty nice. Um, a pot size re-raise would be three times the last bet, so let's call it 400, even though it's 375. So that's 1200 plus any additional money in the pot. So that is 1200, 1600, 17, 18, 25. So that would be a pot size re-raise minus a little bit because I did 400 instead of 375. So call it I don't know 1750. But in this spot, I think if we make it something like 1750, it's going to be very obvious to my opponents that I'm not going to fold. Very few people are going to put in 1750 out of 4,500 and then fold. So if I am going to re-raise, I definitely want to make it a little bit smaller, probably 1100 or 1200. And again, that's smaller than I would typically make it with any of my uh, marginal value hands or even bluffs, although I probably don't have many bluffs here at all. So um, whenever your range is very nut heavy, as mine is here, you typically want to raise smaller or bet small because you don't care if your opponent's call because you should have such a huge equity advantage. And with kings, clearly I should have a huge equity, equity advantage. So I make it 1100. And this puts my opponents in pretty tough spots. We have a 40-year-old guy cold calling under the gun and <laughs> second position guy all call. So whenever this player over here cold calls... I imagine he's going to have a lot of stuff like ace-queen, ace-jack, maybe ace-king, pocket jacks, pocket tens, pocket nines, pocket eights, maybe stuff like jack-10 suited, 10-9 suited, king-queen suited, stuff like that. It's kind of tough to know what a random 40-year-old guy is going to cold call your three bet with um, because it could just be aces, right? If it's just aces, then that's clearly not good for me. But I do think it's going to be a much wider range of hands that a lot of people just perceive to be, you know, quote-unquote, pretty good. So seat one, once a 40-year-old guy calls, seat one's going to call a decent amount of the time and seat eight or seat two is going to call a decent amount of the time. I know I don't have their stacks listed here, but let's just assume they're all 10,000 or so. Um, so anyway, let's see what happens. 40-year-old guy checks, seat one checks, seat two checks. And now I bet 1,800 out of my 3,400 stack. So this is a tough spot. Notice the pot was 4,000. 450 and I had 3,400 so here I can go either way I can either bet relatively small and I actually would have preferred a smaller bet maybe something like 1,300 to really try to get my opponents to lose their minds also you know if I bet 1,300 and then someone raises and someone re-raises I could actually fold this I know that sounds a little bit snug but if you think about the range of hands that our opponents should be happily willing to get it in with it's going to be mostly incredibly premium hands like well sets and very good flush draws. So if they're only willing to get in with those hands and and I'm against two of those ranges, I think I actually could fold this if I was to bet something like 1300. When I bet 1800 though out of my 3400 stack, notice this is half my remaining stack. I don't really see how I can justify folding pretty much no matter what action takes place now. So I, I, like I said, I would prefer just a tiny bit of a smaller bet. So here I do bet 1800 and this player check raises all in. Well, we're going to hop in there, right? Certainly can't fold not given the pot odds we're getting. So I do call. And he has queen 10 suited. And we end up winning a nice pot. So some people look at this scenario again and think that this was just a setup. But in reality, 
Was it actually a setup? Well, first off, this guy had to call the under the gun raise, which I actually think was a pretty significant mistake. Hands like queen 10 suited, king 10 suited, jack nine suited, jack eight suited, stuff like that from early position facing an under the gun raise. Whenever you're not playing like 300 big blinds deep, it's usually just going to be way too loose because these hands, when they do flop a pair, it's often top pair or middle pair with a marginal kicker. And you have to ask yourself, do I actually want to play reasonable pots with top pair or middle pair with a marginal kicker? And the answer is just no, right? So they're not really playing for their pair values. So the hand's mainly playing for its straight and its flush value, and that just doesn't come in very often. So this is a spot where I would definitely suggest this player fold. And then once I re-raise, notice that, remember, I, I, we go like pre-flop, I re-raised to 1,100 pre-flop. If I made it 1,800, this guy in seat two very easily could have just folded and he would not have paid me off. So a few things did have to go right in this hand. First, he had to call the initial raise, which I think was just a pure error. Then I had to be aware that if I re-raise large, players are going to fold out stuff like this queen 10 suited, and they're not going to give me action. Um, notice that I want action from queen 10 suited. I'm not trying to make him fold. While protecting your hand is sometimes relevant, whenever your opponents are drawing very thin, as your opponents typically will be when you have pocket kings, Protection is not your main concern. Now, I'm not saying you should re-raise tiny. If you watch one of the previous videos I did for Poker News, there was a spot where the guy, like someone made it 150, I called, and then the guy three bet with aces to 325. I think that's definitely a mistake because then you're pricing your opponent's in. Like right here, if, if um, the initial raiser made it 450 and someone called and I made it 800, well, then they only have to call 350 more and they're going to call with all sorts of stuff getting great odds and they're not really making much of an error. But here, putting in 1,100 whenever I only started with 4,500, that's going to be a pretty big error just because the player's not getting nearly the correct implied odds. So I know it sounds like I'm probably harping on this guy a little bit too much, but this is a mistake that I see a lot of amateurs make on a regular basis. They splash around too much preflop for the initial raise, and then once it gets back to them, they feel priced in to call the three bet, and next thing you know, they're playing all in with top pair with the junkie kicker, and that is exactly where you do not want to be. I do think once he flops top pair with the junkie kicker, he can't really fold, but you know that's why you don't want to be playing these hands in the first place. So that's going to be it for this educational hand for PokerNews.com. If you enjoyed this, check out PokerCoaching.com. There I have a lot of interactive hand quizzes, and if you have played those quizzes, you will certainly know that the player in seat two should not be splashing around with Queen 10 suited. So uh, go there, check it out. There is a free one-month trial. I'm sorry, free one-week trial. Got to pay if you want a month. But um, you can certainly go through the site and try everything out for the first week. And most people who try it for a week end up signing up for a month because it is that educational. So anyway, thank you very much. Be sure to come back next week for another educational poker news hand. Thanks for watching.